mention the war. That's a very well-known catchphrase from the British comedy series Faulty Towers. The idea behind it is when you meet a German, the very first thing you think about will be the war. But you absolutely mustn't mention it. So anyway, imagine my surprise when I was channel hopping on one of my first trips to Germany and the war was everywhere. It felt like every day the television schedule was peppered with heavy Hitler documentaries and World War II films. That's how I came to appreciate for the first time that Germany as a whole doesn't ignore its dark past. But this wasn't always the case. For many years after the war, National Socialism was mostly a taboo topic among families. Parents and grandparents weren't asked uncomfortable questions about their involvement. Some films and books, like Gunter Grass's The Tin Drum, began exploring the topic, but it was a spate of anti-Semitic vandalism in West Germany starting in 1959, which proved to be a wake-up call. A new focus was put on education, and by the time Germans of my generation were in school, the Holocaust and National Socialism were a firm feature on the curriculum. Many also began to ask questions about their own family's involvement. Of course, it's hard or even impossible to compare the atrocities of the Holocaust with any other event. But I, for one, heard very little about my own country's darkest chapters during history lessons or in public discussion. So for an outsider, it could be quite remarkable to see this painful history raked over so often and so publicly in Germany. An important motivation is fear of history repeating itself. Recent years have seen the re-entry of a far-right political party into Parliament and several horrific murders by right-wing extremists. Permanent police presence at many of Germany's synagogues is reminder enough that the shadow of anti-Semitism remains. So, how relevant is Germany's history today, and how much responsibility do Germans still carry for it? We Deutschen können nicht stolz sein auf unsere Geschichte. Nur weil es so lange her ist und jetzt keiner persönliche Schuld mehr hat, glaube ich nicht, dass man jetzt einfach sagen kann, es war ja keiner. Wir können nichts dafür, unsere Kinder nicht, unsere Enkel nicht. Also irgendwann müsste ja mal Schluss sein. 70, 80 Jahre danach zu sagen, wir tragen daran Schuld, fände ich viel zu groß. Aber ich glaube, wir tragen eine Verantwortung, das was irgendwo verhindern, dass sowas wieder passiert. Wird in Deutschland genug, zu wenig oder zu viel darüber gesprochen? Ach, man kann gar nicht genug darüber sprechen. Manchmal denke man, es ist zu viel des Guten. Immer wieder, immer wieder, immer wieder. Ich glaube, es ist immer in Deutschland ein totales Tab Tabuthema. Ne? Ich glaube, es wird viel gesprochen, aber die Aufmerksamkeitsspanne, die wird immer kleiner, um das Gesprochen auch zu bewerten. Gerade wenn man von der Schule zum Beispiel nach Hause kam und sowas gelernt hat, hat man halt natürlich auch die Eltern gefragt oder die Großeltern. Die Eltern, die noch aus der Zeit kamen, die wollten sich in gewisser Weise, auch wenn sie nichts damit zu tun hatten, distanzieren. Was mich nur immer wieder erstaunt ist, dass diese Generation angeblich nicht davon wusste, was damals passiert ist. Haben Sie manchmal Angst, dass sowas wieder passieren könnte? Ja, durchaus, ja, habe ich. Also es kann jederzeit wieder passieren. Wir sind jetzt nicht weder, weder klüger als die Menschen damals noch Gott sonst irgendwas. Nein. Keine Angst. Hier bei uns in Europa haben wir genug gelernt, Erste und Zweite Weltkrieg. Ich glaube nicht, dass das sowas kommt. Die Menschheit ist vernünftig geworden. Hosting Meet the Germans has made me realize that the consequences of the Nazi era can be felt all over the place in Germany. Some things are obvious, like you don't come across very many Adolfs these days. But then the war and the Nazis also came up when I was researching episodes on things like hiking, films, fashion, all sorts of seemingly unrelated topics. This has had an unmistakable effect on national pride. You rarely see the German flag flying here, unless the World Cup is on. And there's no visible pride in the armed forces either. In fact, it seems the country's military is more often ridiculed than celebrated. That's not to say that most Germans are not proud of their country. Many are, but their patriotism is usually quiet and practical rather than loud and emotional. Germans are also among the most pro-EU Europeans. One of the organization's founding purposes was, after all, to promote peace in Europe. Some reminders of the war are visible when walking around the streets, too. Take this building, the Haus der Kunst or House of Art in Munich. It's a prominent example of Nazi architecture. So what do you do with something like this? Is it enough to take something tainted and do something good with it, or does it need to be removed? After years of discussion about various buildings like this one, the jury's still out. What about memorials to the victims of the Nazis? They can be found all over the place in Germany, often organized and financed by the local community. It wasn't until 2005 that the German government unveiled its first official memorial to Europe's murdered Jews. The haunting Holocaust memorial in central Berlin has become one of the capital's most visited landmarks. Three years later came the state's first memorial dedicated to homosexual victims, and in 2012, one for Roma and Sinti victims. 
One subtle yet striking part of the memorial culture in Germany are the Stolpersteine, or stumbling stones. These small brass squares are inscribed with the names of victims of the Nazi regime and set into the pavement outside their last known address. The project was started in the 90s by German artist Gunther Demnisch, and today there are more than 75,000 stumbling stones across Germany and other countries. But even this is not without controversy. The city of Munich has actually banned the stones from being installed on public ground after some people, including a prominent Jewish community leader, argued that it was disrespectful to commemorate victims with something on the ground that you can walk over. The city has instead opted for wall plaques like this one. But I want to bring it back to where we started. Comedy. Hitler and the Nazis have been satirised many times over. British silent movie star Charlie Chaplin kicked things off way back in 1940 with The Great Dictator. In 2019, New Zealand director Taika Waititi confidently poked fun at the Führer in Jojo Rabbit. But what about in Germany? Could you, for example, write a book imagining Hitler waking up in modern-day Berlin? How he might react to Angela Merkel and multiculturalism? how he might rise to fame, but this time as a TV star. Well, that's exactly what German author Timo Vermesch did. His 2012 book, Er ist wieder da, or in English, Look Who's Back, topped the bestsellers lists in Germany and was later made into a film. Ich fand einfach den, den Widerspruch, die Fallhöhe so, so, so enorm. Beim Lesen von Mein Kampf generell dieses, ähm, auf der einen Seite haben wir den Typ, der sich für ein Genie hält, und auf der anderen Seite Von der ersten Seite an lesen sie, dass da einer um Anerkennung bettelt. Und diese Widersprüche geben eben eine sehr schönes, schöne Möglichkeit für, für Humor. Haben manche Leute dann gesagt, dass sie zu weit gegangen sind? Ja. Aber sie konnten es nicht wirklich begründen. Sehr häufig stößt man halt auf nicht viel mehr als ein antrainiertes Tabu, das aber nicht untermauert ist. Die Leserreaktionen waren sehr unterschiedlich. Die einen fanden das verstörend, wie man es in diesem Kopf so lange aushält. Und der Kopf ist ja nicht verändert worden. Das ist ja sehr, sehr original Hitler. Und andere sagten dann, hey, super, wie er da, der Merkel einen drauf gibt, der sagt, was noch mal gesagt werden muss. Die haben nach sehr kurzer Zeit dann auch vergessen, wer da zu ihnen spricht. Der Leser ist mit dem Buch allein. Er hat die Möglichkeit zu sagen, ah, ähm, das ist zu viel, so nicht. Da hören wir jetzt mal auf. Aber er macht's nicht, weil es so schön witzig ist. Now it's time for you to have your say. What do you think about how Germany deals with its past? And have you got any other questions? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>